Hello, welcome back to the garden. Or actually the greenhouse today. <laughs> I have been delinquent in sowing some of my seeds. And part of that, part of the reason is, is because I have everything scheduled on a calendar. And I've been following that schedule and then thinking about what I need to be planting out in the next few weeks. I discovered that I forgot to be, I forgot to start planting some herbs inside. So today we're in a little bit of a catch up. I'm going to be sowing some stuff that I have scheduled and I'm going to be sowing stuff that I didn't, in, that I totally forgot about, like the herbs. So let's get to sowing and I'll show you what we got going on. One thing before I get to sewing here, I want to thank all the new subscribers to the channel. There's a bunch of you that just subscribed to the channel. Hopefully you can follow me along in my gardening year here and see what's going on. What am I growing? What's happening here in the garden? There's a bunch of new exciting things that are that I do plan on planting out this year. There's some structural things that I plan on doing this year. There's some new trees that are going out. If you haven't watched my previous video, which is getting rid of something old, not so old, something like that. I can't remember the name of the title. If I do, I'll put it here. I need to get rid of two of my pear trees, which were blighted, and I have found replacements. But if you guys do have any suggestions for any flowering trees that will grow in growing zone 8A, please feel free to, or actually I'm 8B now. It doesn't matter. Growing zone 8, please leave those suggestions below because... I, yeah, again, I have an acre and a half and I could probably wind up finding a place for them someplace. Don't say crepe myrtle. <laughs> I have quite a few crepe myrtles already. I think I'm up to one, two, three, four, at least four, maybe five. Uh, I think I lost track someplace, but I have quite a few crepe myrtles. So I'm good with crepe myrtles, but anything else, somebody, I believe it was Sue Anonymous maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but either way, uh, if you, you know who you are, you left actually a series of uh, uh, suggestions below and I did look into one or two of them and they look really interesting. So I might be picking up one or two of those plants, those trees in the near future to plant out elsewhere in the garden. Oh. But enough of that prattling. Let me get to seed sowing here. And the first thing we're going to be sowing today is probably one of my favorites and I don't know why I forgot this. I, haven't, I didn't forget it. It's just it wasn't my calendar, and I was going religiously by my seed sowing calendar. And again, I don't know what I was thinking. Now, I could sow this directly in the ground. I'm going to sow these in the tray now so that when my in-ground beds are prepped and ready to go, which they're not, I'll probably be doing that the first week of April. But by then, hopefully, these should be getting close to being planted out, say, the second or third week of April. I won't plant these out until I know that last frost is done which again will probably be second or third week of April. Uh, now this variety is sweet basil. And I'm growing sweet basil because it's slow to bolt down here in growing zone 8A or B. I forget, I think I'm B now. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't really bolt. Now I've tried growing Genovese basil and Genovese basil will bolt on me very quickly. But sweet basil does not bolt that quickly. So that's a huge plus. The other variety of basil, which I don't know if I have out here today, but I will be growing in the near future, is dark opal basil. But I'll be doing that for, as an ornamental. Uh, I can't, you could eat it. It's, I believe it's fine. I haven't really tasted it. But I grow it as an ornamental because it has these dark purplish leaves. And then it puts up these almost purplish whitish flower stalks. A lot of seeds here. And since I like basil, my wife and I like basil. We like to make pesto. Oh, so a fairly sizable tray here. Water, label, and find a spot somewhere on the bench. The next one I'm gonna do is another herb, and this is English thyme. I think I've grown English thyme before. The seeds are incredibly fine here. So I'm just gonna do it in a little tray. Water, and label. The next one I'm doing is another, again, another herb. Don't worry, they're not all herbs. I do have some flowers to plant, so. We'll be planting them in a second, but this is giant, uh, giant Italian parsley. My only problem with parsley that I have, and maybe you guys have the same problem, is the uh, swallowtail caterpillars. Every year, the swallowtail caterpillars are uh, running around and they're eating my parsley down to the ground. Now, interestingly enough, though, the parsley will regrow. Unfortunately, as soon as it starts to regrow, Caterpillars come back and they eat it again. 
Uh, I could keep it underneath a netting, but honestly, if I plant enough of it and I just keep my eye on it, I can get a harvest out of it. So if the caterpillars eat some of it, it doesn't really bother me. If they re eat all of it, it bothers me a little bit. Okay, and the last herb I'm gonna be planting today is sage. We don't use that much sage, but it is uh, nice to have when you want it. Do you guys use a lot of sage in your cooking or gardens? Leave it in the comment below. If you know of another use for sage other than cooking, please leave those comments below. I know some of these plants have multiple uses, remedies, herbal remedies and things like that. Now the sage here, it says it's supposed to be started eight to 10 weeks before your last frost. So we're sort of behind, but I'm gonna sow it now. We'll, we will see what happens. Again, I'm in growing zone 8A, quite warm. And so the sage may play catch up and get to the point where I can plant it outside probably by the end of, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe April, maybe May. I don't know. Hit the subscribe button, give a follow, and uh, you'll hopefully see when I plant out the sage. If any of this germinates, this is also old seed. I think this is like two year old seed. Water, label, and find a space for it. Okay, so now we're on to flowers, the more exciting part of the seed sowing. The first one I'm gonna do is a, it's one I really wanna grow, but I'm never smart enough to grow it properly. So this is blackberry lily. And according to the instructions, I'm supposed to cold germinate this. Unfortunately, I always forget to cold germinate it. Maybe that's why I have such terrible luck with the blackberry lily. But I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll do about half the packet and we'll see what happens. If, it, if I get one plant out of this, fabulous. If I get more, fabulous. If nothing comes up, I still have half a pack to try to remember to cold stratify for next year. You know the drill, water, label, and try to find a space on the crowded bench. If you watched my potting shed video, thank you. Uh, <laughs> But I, I, again, I'm thinking about building a potting shed sometime in the future. It might be next winter's project. We'll have to wait and see. But that, this space right here that I have for the potting bench, I would then have a shelf space for plants, obviously. Even the shelf above it that I have right now filled with the various accoutrements, that would also be good for plants. And the more shelf space, the better for plants because I'd be doing a lot of my potting inside the potting shed. Water it, bring it out here, done, and just wait for it to grow. That being said, I would probably run out of space again in the greenhouse because this is what happens. I think I'd be okay with a greenhouse that's maybe 16 by 24 or something, something ridiculous. <laughs> but even then, I'm sure I would wind up filling it with plants and wind up running out of space. Such is the life of a gardener. Let's plant some flowers. So the next one, I have is Lobelia Starship Blue. Uh, these get to about two feet high. Now, I think the Lobelia is some of the seeds that got eaten last year in the garage by the mice. So I'm gonna plant these out here. I'm sure they'll have better luck. Now, a lot of those other seeds I just planted uh, required a dusting or a you know, quarter inch depth sort of planting thing. These are gonna be sort of surface, but the suggestion is to cover them with a little vermiculite. And oh my God, these are fine seeds. So what I'll do is I'll water them first and then I'll cover with vermiculite. Don't forget the label. And then one more seed to go. And this one is going to be Lobelia Starship Scarlet Bronze Leaf. It's just a red Lobelia. Water, vermiculite, label, stick on shelf. Today is gonna to be about, I think 72, 74 degrees, but the rest of the week is going to be much cooler. It's gonna be in the low to mid 60s. Nighttime temperatures will get down towards uh, 40, and I think there might be one night where it could get down to 37, 35, so we might get a light frost. We'll have to keep an eye, I'll have to keep an eye on that, and that's also why I've 
not taking any of my tender seedlings and put them outside because otherwise I have to rush them back inside, find shelf space, etc., etc. Keep them in here again until at least that last frost is gone. Once I'm fairly confident that last frost is gone, which allegedly is April 1st, then I start bringing a lot of this stuff out, especially the bigger stuff, start bringing that outside. If the greenhouse is going to start getting too warm, then, because it, it all depends upon the weather. Uh, we could have a cool spring or we could have a hotter spring. It's up to mother nature. Again, depending upon the weather, I may totally evacuate the greenhouse with all of my seedlings, put them on benches and tables, or they may just stay in here in until early May. And then once everything's big enough, I can start planting everything out in the ground. So there's a lot going on here in the garden. There's gonna be a, obviously your garden too, if you're gardening, there's a lot that's gonna be happening in the next few weeks because spring is almost here. I believe the first official day of spring is March 19th. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong below. And then of course, as the weather starts warming up all over the country, I'm in eight growing zone eight, growing zone seven, six, five, four, et cetera. You guys all have different uh, climates. Once that freeze frost is definitely gone, then there's gonna be some crazy planting going on around here. And I'm sure you'll be doing the same thing in your gardens, but soon, probably sometime this week, I'll be planting out some trees. And I may even start planting out some shrubbery because again, I don't think we're gonna get uh, a major freeze or frost, but if I do, we'll talk about it when I start planting stuff out, but trees and shrubs will probably start getting planted out maybe next week. And then the annuals, perennials, etc. they'll probably go in the next couple of weeks, but there's, and there's still so much more to come. Uh, I have to get my in-ground bed prepped and ready. I have to start filling up and topping off my raised beds because some, many of them have sunk down. I'll talk more about that when I get over to that, unless you want to go back and watch last year's videos, which please feel free to go back and watch last year's videos, but I'll bring you along for the uh, raised beds and starting to plant up the raised beds. Yeah, clock's ticking. The race is almost here. And Sophie has been enjoying the nice weather that we've been having, although it is kind of warm today, but she doesn't seem to mind too much. Uh, she's been running around chasing the bees that get too low to the ground and some of the other critters. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video. This way you can follow along with my antics, shenanigans, etc., etc. If there's something you'd like to see or a question or a comment, please leave them below in the comments section. Please be sure to check out all the links below. I have various affiliate links. And if you purchase something through one of those affiliate links, I make a small commission off of those with no cost to you. And of course, go please go check out my book in my Etsy store. And if you guys have any other questions or comments, like I said, please leave them below. Until then, Sophie and I are going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.